Lesson 3.7, Estimate Decimal Sums and Differences. We can estimate decimal sums and differences by rounding or using a number line with benchmarks. To round whole numbers or decimals, we need to use place value and identify to which place we're rounding. We first learned the rules for rounding decimals in video 3.4. If the digit to the right is a 5, 6, 7, 8, or 9, it tells the digit in the rounding place to go up 1. If the digit to the right is a 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4, it tells the digit in the rounding place to stay the same. And the digits to the right of a decimal are removed after they do their job. When we add or subtract decimals, we can neatly stack them with all of their decimal points lined up. This will keep each place value in the correct place. Mrs. Kim bought two and twenty-four hundredths pounds of grapes, one and five tenths pounds of bananas, and three and fifteen hundredths pounds of apples. How many pounds of fruit did she purchase? So we think we can round to the nearest whole number, then add. The whole number 2, it's going to stay the same because the 2 is telling it to stay the same. It's going to be a 2. The 5 tells the 1 to go up, so we have a 2. And the 1 in the tenths place tells the 3 to go stay as a 3. We add these and get 7 pounds of fruit. So the digit to the right of the rounding digit tells it what to do. And for cases like this 1 and 5 tenths, Remember the trailing zeros can be added or taken away from the right side of a decimal. 1 and 5 tenths is equal to 1 and 50 hundredths, and we learned this in video 3.4, which is linked in the description. Sometimes adding a trailing zero can make it easier to add it to other decimals. We can use rounding to estimate differences. Here we're doing subtraction. We have $36.99 minus twelve dollars and eighty cents. This nine is going to tell the six to go up to a seven so it rounds to thirty seven dollars when we round to the nearest dollar. This eight is going to tell the two to go up to a three so it rounds to thirteen dollars and thirty seven dollars minus thirteen dollars is twenty four dollars. If we're rounding to the nearest ten dollars then subtracting the six is going to tell the three to go up to a four and the 2 is going to tell the 1 to stay the same, we have $40 minus $10, that's $30. And this answer, $24, is more accurate because we rounded it to a lesser place value. The accuracy of our estimate will depend on the place value to which we are rounding. The lesser the place value, the closer the estimate. Here we have $41.89 and we're adding $14.28. This 1 is going to tell the 4 to stay the same, so it's to the nearest 10, it's going to be $40. And this 4 is going to tell the 1 to stay the same, so to the nearest 10, it's $10. We add them together and get $50. But if we round them to the nearest $1, this 8 is going to tell the 1 to go up to a 2, so it's going to round to $42. And this 2 is going to tell the 4 to stay the same, it's going to round to $14. and we add them together and get $56. If we round it to the nearest tenths place, this 9 is going to tell the 8 to go up to a 9, and it turns into a 0. We have $41.90. And this 8 is going to tell the 2 to go up to a 3, and it's going to turn into a 0 when it's finished doing its job. And we add them together and get $56.20. And we can see that these two amounts are very close. So these are more accurate than this one. When we estimate, we aren't trying to find the exact answer. We're looking for a number that is close enough to the exact answer. An overestimate is an estimate that is greater than the actual amount. And the estimate is greater than the actual sum or difference, so it's an overestimate. We have 27 and 50 hundredths plus 18 and 25 hundredths. The 7 is going to tell the 2 to go up to a 3, so it's going to round to 30. 
and this 8 is going to tell the 1 to go up to a 2, so it's going to round to 20. We add them together, and we overestimate 50. This 30 is more than this decimal number, and this 20 is more than this decimal number, so our estimate is going to be more than the actual amount. And overestimating is useful when we need to stay below a certain amount. If this was the price of a pair of pants and this was the price of a shirt and we had a certain amount of money, we could estimate the cost of the two items and think we need at least $50 to have enough money. If we had $55, we would know we had enough money by doing the estimate. An underestimate is an estimate that is less than the actual amount. We have 24 and 25 hundredths. The 4 is going to tell the 2 to stay the same. Then they drop off, so we have a 20. And this 3 is going to tell the 1 to stay the same, so we have a 10. We underestimate 30. That's lower than the actual amount. Because this 20 is lower than this decimal, and this 10 is lower than this decimal, our estimate is lower than the actual amount. So 30 is an underestimate. Benchmarks are familiar numbers that are used as points of reference. We can use the benchmarks 25 hundredths, 50 hundredths, 75 hundredths, and one whole to estimate decimal sums and differences. We need to add 23 hundredths plus 51 hundredths. So we locate and graph a point on the number line for each decimal add end. Here is 23 hundredths, just below 25 hundredths, and here's 51 hundredths, just above 50 hundredths. We identify each benchmark each add end is closer to. We add 25 hundredths plus 15, 50 hundredths for our benchmarks and get 75 hundredths. So we can say that they are about 75 hundredths. The benchmarks 25 hundredths, 50 hundredths, and 75 hundredths can be written in fraction form using hundredths as the denominator. Then we can write each fraction in simplest form. If you don't remember how to do that, there's a link to 4th grade math 6.3 in the description. What we do to find fractions simplest form is we divide the numerator and denominator by their greatest common factor. So 25 hundredths would have a numerator of 25, a denominator of 100, it's 25 hundredths, and because both 25 and 100 have the greatest common factor 25, we divide both by 25 and it's equal to 1 fourth. 50 hundredths, we have a 50 for a numerator and a 100 for a denominator. The greatest common factor for both of these would be 50. We divide the numerator and denominator both by 50 and we get 1 half. For 75 hundredths, we have a 75 for a numerator and a 100 for a denominator. The greatest common factor for both of these would be 25. We divide the numerator and denominator both by a 25 and we get 3 fourths. So on a number line, we can see that 25 hundredths is a fourth, 50 hundredths is half, and 75 hundredths is three fourths. We can use benchmarks to find the difference. We have 73 hundredths minus 47 hundredths. We locate them on our number line. 73 hundredths is close to 75 hundredths, and 47 hundredths is just below 50 hundredths. We subtract 75 hundredths minus 50 hundredths and get 25 hundredths. We know that 73 hundredths minus 47 hundredths is about 25 hundredths. And we can get different answers when using rounding or benchmarks to estimate. We had this addition problem before and when we used a benchmark, we found that it was about 75 hundredths. But when we round to the nearest tenth, the 3 tells the 2 to stay the same, so it rounds to 20 hundredths. And the 1 tells the 5 to stay the same, so it rounds to 50 hundredths. We add them together and get 70 hundredths. So rounding to the nearest tenth got 70 hundredths, but using a benchmark got us 75 hundredths. 
we just did this one and we found the difference was about 25 hundredths using a benchmark. But when we round to the nearest tenth, we get 70 hundredths minus 50 hundredths. That's 20 hundredths. That's different than the benchmark answer. So depending on the problem, one way may be better to use than another. Emma is buying a pair of jeans that cost $59.98 and a pair of earrings that cost $12.95. About how much money will she need? We can estimate each amount to the nearest $1, then add. This 9 tells this 9 to go up but it can't. It'll turn into a zero and give a one to the tens place. So $59.98 is going to round to $60. And this nine tells the two to go up to a three. That's going to round to $13. We get $73 for our estimate. About how much more do the jeans cost than the earrings? Again, this is going to round to $60 if we round to the nearest $1, and this is going to round to $13. We can subtract, and the difference is $47. We know the jeans cost about $47 more than the earrings. Now, looking ahead to middle school, in seventh grade math, we'll use this symbol, which means approximately equal to and we can use this symbol for estimating and rounding decimals. This zero is going to tell the seven to stay the same, so we just have a seven. This eight is going to tell the two to round up to a three, so we have seven plus three. It is approximately equal to ten. And this symbol, if we have just one wavy line, that's a tilde. If we have two of them, it's a double tilde. It means approximately equal to. Some of you may use this in 6th grade. Some of you may even use it in 5th grade. It depends on which school you go to. Make sure that your decimal points are lined up and make sure you're careful with trailing zeros because they don't change the value of a decimal when we add a zero to the right side. Our next lesson, 3.8, we're going to actually add decimals stacked up with their decimal points all lined up nice. I hope I'll see you there. I hope you have a great day. Stay strong. Stay safe. Bye.